Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm Warren and welcome back to Pempio. Okay, we'll get started. But before we do that, I'm gonna do right now a bit of a um, beard. I'm going to um, Beat it and um, I go and do you beat it and but I go and um, they are giving away Twilight Putin, Egg Come to on Go Up Duty Back Up B. Wait now. Well, hello, Mr. Petrescu. Hello, Doctor Reed. Come on in. Okay. I entered the wet one ear. So, but we gonna. Take the bomb. Why are we out there? It's locked, all right. Damn. Yeah, it. Ooh. Very thick. I see. But thick won't. Okay, there was more to talk about. Oh. I need help. What do we have here, nurse? Patient Razvan Vasily, <coughs> fever running on three days. Complaints of dizziness, muscle aches, and head pain, diagnosed with influenza. Treatment? Aspirin is Allison for the fever and discomfort. Liquids for dehydration, but he's having trouble keeping even water down. Aspirin and salicin, you say? Why not some warm milk and a kiss on the cheek? Where are the quinine salts? Tried buying, borrowing, even stealing. There's none to be found, Doctor. He's not convulsing, he's choking. He's not getting any air. Skull, hand me that skull. What can I do, Doctor? It's too dangerous to operate with these convulsions. Sedative, nurse. Do we have any anesthetics? I'm sorry, doctor. None at all. I need to perform a tracheostomy. Short pipe. That rubber tube will do. We're going to cut a passage for air through the neck. Yes, doctor. He's breathing again, but he's coughing up blood. Internal hemorrhaging. I need to make another incision into the chest cavity to drain the fluids from the lung. Prepare another tube. A thoracostomy. Doctor, we've nothing to fight the infection. We need an aseptic environment. Right then, Nurse Crane. 
What do you suggest we do? I've no idea. I'm not the doctor. Time is of the essence. We need to perform a thoracic drain. Yes, doctor. He's still bleeding, doctor. I'm losing his pulse. The drain must have punctured the intercostal artery. There's too much blood. Are you all right, doctor? I... I can't see. Yes. Yes. I have this, nurse. Allow me to finish the procedure alone. I need the room. I'd prefer to stay and see this through. This is my patient, Doctor. I have needle and thread for stitching the wound. Good. The stitches are holding. How's he doing? We're losing him. We've lost his pulse. He's, He's dying, dying doctor. doctor! A dose of epinephrine, now. Yes, yes Doctor. doctor. We've lost the pulse. He, he's gone, Doctor. Yes. We did everything we could. Truly? Everything you could. Is that how you'll report this in your log? Is this how the war went, piling up one poor corpse beside the next? This was not an influenza-induced seizure. I've never seen symptoms like these on the continent. Neither have I. But the previous symptoms leading up to this attack were the same, indistinguishable from the epidemic. No. There was something more vile in these reactions. Something... primitive. There have been numerous reports of mental breakdowns caused by the fever that accompanies the flu itself, Doctor. Yes, but... I'd best take some samples of the blood for analysis. I doubt you're here to test my bedside manners. I suspect it was more than intuition alone that led you to us. So, how might I be of service, Dr. Reed? I've come to put an end to this insufferable blackmailing, Dorothy. Doctor, you think your warnings scare me? I've stolen and plied, blackmailed and lied, but what else am I to do? I'm all these people have. <coughs> Hmm. You've convinced me of the sincerity of your actions and their noble justifications. But all the same, blackmail is a crime, and it will stop, Nurse Crane. So, are you going to turn me over to the authorities? You will erase from your memory everything you pretend to know about Lady Ashbury and Pembroke Hospital. Let that rich bitch off the hook over my dead body. Nurse Crane, enough. Listen as if your life depended on every word. I know you have a generous heart who gives freely to those in need, but you shall walk away from the shadier streets of your business. I will never abandon... Dorothy, the discussion has come to a close. Your clandestine activities in the Resistance are over. Let it go. I'll... I'll let it... Go. Yes. Oh. <coughs> right then. It's locked, all right. I could a bit of a. Bunch of people might die. 
Heptitite. This one stinks already. Still not good. <coughs> Step away, sir. Hey, I'm talking to you. Burn it, boys. Okay, you know. Dude, we can pay. Take up on them. Hello, Mr. Petrescu. Hello, Dr. Reed. Come on in. Yes? I know you fought for your. But. How do you want to water? Goodbye, Mr. Well, I get we weep. <coughs> Good evening, Miss. Good evening, sir. Are you interested in a miraculous cure for this unknown and deadly epidemic? Actually, I am. Then you have come to the right place. The famous Swanborough Cordial is all you need to help keep you in perfect health. Oh, really? Why didn't I hear about it during my studies? I'm Jonathan Reed, by the way. Dr. Jonathan Reed. Ah, my brother has spoken of your research, sir. I'm Loretta Swanborough, and it's always a pleasure <coughs> to meet a fellow healer. I'd like to see what kind of medicine you're selling. Hmm. Nah. Where do I go?
Okay. Um. I won't end up another drunk ass on littering streets. Not me. Are you all right? The bastard hit the wall next to me. I don't even know if he meant to miss. If you've been hurt, I can help you. I'm a doctor. Name's Albert. Remember it. Now bugger off. What happened? Did you really steal that man's medication? Hey, I didn't do anything. It ain't me. Yes, you did. And it was cowardly and inexcusable. Sod off, mister. You ain't got no clue what's going on here. Bastard was a soldier in the war, so now he's got the right to shoot me. It's true. I'm not familiar with this part of town. Perhaps you could help me. I said sod off. Go find yourself another guide. What happened? Hey! Yes, you did. Sod off. It's true. I said... Goodbye, young man. We need find wake up bit. Human blood. Whoever left these marks did so deliberately. Ah, oh, yeah. We're burnt down kill point. I need that one. Yeah, I hear ya.
I think they might die. Okay, Dutty. One down. I think I thought I got another weapon. Yeah. Oh. Oh no. That's a big deal. Level 10. <coughs> okay. We're at back and never forgive But what what the we can you take I? 
Good evening, Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. Why did your mother have you? I'm... Hmm. I... I have to go. Do don't drop the option to open. down or the up nope two can couple you to avert your eyes, sir, or did you not know it was rude to stare? I knew it. Speak up, Dr. Reed. I like a man who speaks his mind. What prevails in the end, I wonder? The desire for blood, or to be of service to man? Spare me your sarcasm, Jonathan. You are but newly born in this world. So in the end, the accusation was true, wasn't it? The situation is somewhat awkward, nonetheless. I have not been observed sustaining myself for many decades. I have to say, I'm a trifle embarrassed. Anyway, I have concluded my inquiries concerning your blackmail. I see. Please excuse my agitated state. Under normal circumstances, <coughs> I wouldn't let anyone see me in this condition. The case is closed, your ladyship. The person who took advantage of you has, shall we say, seen the error of her ways. So who was it? My lady, the blackmailer was dealt with using the utmost discretion. The culprit's identity is of no relevance. Thank you, Jonathan. That is exactly what I needed from you. You have proven your loyalty, so, as a friend, please accept this small token of my appreciation. Thank you, my lady. If you have an inclination to learn more about vampires or your current situation, I will be glad to aid you in your quest for knowledge. Okay. Are there many vampires here in London? Immortals are of a rare breed, and we often tend to hide. But you may occasionally meet some of us at night. Will they all be as affable as you, my lady? I do not see why not. But remember, even the shark dies <coughs> before he bites. That sounds like a lesson from experience. Vampire politics are as intricate and sometimes tedious as a game of chess in a gentleman's club. I've learned from experience it is best to decline to play. Do you know any of them? Have you an idea of the identity of the vampire who attacked me? You mean your maker? No, Jonathan, I have no clue. But I fear he or she is as careless as cruel to let you discover your new condition by yourself. What do you mean? Every now and then, you may discover an immortal in the deep of the night. But we are a rare and reclusive breed. Our progeny is almost never accidental. 
I've been away from London and England for three years. This isn't the city I remember. Things have gone from bad to worse here, Jonathan. <coughs> I've lived in this city for a long time, and I've never seen it like this. What is it you fear? Fear has long since flown this form. But there is something malevolent circling us. I feel fear is merely waiting in the wings. The Spanish flu has hit London that bad. Yes, but it's not just that. I've heard things. Things I've not heard for a very, very long time. There are whispers in the shadows. Something far worse than the Spanish flu is here in the city. Hmm. All right. When I awoke, changed, I was chased and attacked by vampire hunters. Prepared and well trained. Though I can't be certain. More than likely, it was the once glorious guard of Prewin. You make them sound like some sort of cult. More a society. And like all the best ones, a secret society. I thought them almost gone, but it seemed they have been recruiting. Once glorious, but still dangerous. They have seen better days, but all fanatics are dangerous. You would be wise to stay clear. They are sworn to destroy our kind. All right. I've been hearing a voice talking in my head. Is this some kind of insanity? It feels like the voice of the vampire that created me. Hush. Tell no one this. It would be unwise to talk of such things amongst British immortals. Speak no more of your maker. Excuse my forwardness, but... Are you my maker? Me? Goodness, no. Only a foolish immortal would create a progeny without taking precaution. And I'm no fool. How could this cause offense? <coughs> Only the powerful immortals can mentally call to their progeny. No vampire or hunter will sleep easy knowing that an unidentified elder is stalking the streets of London. I don't understand. Why was I created and then left for dead? That is a question only the one who made you can answer. It's not normal practice. I doubt even if you find him, he will answer you, considering how cruelly he treated you. I'd like to avoid creating another vampire by mistake anyway. Tell me, how is it done? The process is dangerous. It could even kill your potential progeny. If you did decide to sire an offspring, they must drink of your blood, Jonathan. Oh. So me being a vampire could have been a mistake? I very much doubt it, Jonathan. Contrary to the legends, it is not as simple to make another vampire by just biting someone. A vampire? Is that what I am? What we are? Such a crude word, defined by penny dreadfuls and drunken hacks. No. You are now an Ekon, and that you shall remain. So we are Ekons. How can I identify us amongst other vampires? How to put it? All Ekon are vampires. But all vampires are not Ekon. We are a... But a branch of the immortal tree. Are you an Ekon too? Yes, I am. We are the closest thing to what man refers to as vampires. Forget what you think you know about us. Why does Dr. Swansea allow you to feed on the patients of the hospital? Dr. Swansea is a good and compassionate man. He is trying to find a solution for our... hunger. Until that happens, he is clever enough to understand that I only feed upon the dying. And no one suspected you of the murders? As you well know, 
Suspicion has recently <coughs> fallen on me of killing for pleasure. But you have my word, Jonathan. I take no pleasure in taking a life. What do you know about this Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stole? The Brotherhood is well known amongst London vampire society. As long as our kind is discreet, and as long as they do not interfere, we have come to a mutual understanding. I know this is beyond the pale, but may I inquire your age? Really? And I thought you were gentlemen. If you must know, I'm 27. I've been 27 for a long time now, and 27 I shall remain. Right. And who bestowed upon you this eternal youth? My maker. He left this isle a long time ago. Very well. But I believe there is more to this than you are saying. A lady has to have some secrets. <coughs> Why did you save me in the canning factory? I could hardly stand by and watch such a promising young blood as yourself be torn to shreds by some gutter scowl. What type of vampire is a skull? Not a true vampire. The deformed offspring of lesser vampires. It is a shame these creatures run wild, slaves to their baser instincts. Okay. William Bishop wasn't the vampire that created me then. No, Jonathan. Whatever their strength and demeanor, Skulls are the progeny of careless vampires. It cannot be the other way round. Okay. I bid you farewell, for now. I must quickly analyze the blood I took from Nurse Crane's patient. Yet. Razvan Vasily was infected by Spanish flu, but also has the highly unstable blood of the Skulls. Is the London vampire epidemic transmitted through the flu? I should talk to Dr. Swansea about it. Tap to be. Evening, Edgar. Could I get your professional <coughs> opinion? Please speak, but I have something important to tell you. This strain of flu, it's very different from the one I saw in Europe. It's downright peculiar. Really? What makes you say that? I never saw symptoms like this when I was in France. Not at all. I see. Do you have anything more to go on? This disease spreads and looks like the Spanish flu, but its effects differ greatly. The London strain is different from the continental one. This is very interesting. Did you find something else? Yes. Unlike the flu, the infected begin to show an increase in outwardly aggressive behavior. More than simple agitation. Once docile people become violent. You mean like rabies? Is there a chance we could create a vaccine, Jonathan, like Pasteur? <coughs> oh, that would be smashing. There's a lot we're not seeing here. But it is spreading, and quickly. If we don't act, the whole city could be lost. 
but Jonathan, we've a fantastic opportunity sitting right here in front of us. A weapon of choice. What on earth do you mean? Why you, my dear boy? With your expertise and your blood, we could isolate the properties that course through your veins. Think about the possibilities. Hmm. I admit it did occur to me. Blood seems to be the common factor in all of this. I totally agree. We're in uncharted territory here. Maybe it's just wishful thinking, but imagine the possibilities. We'll discuss this more later. Thank you for your time. No, thank you, Jonathan. But as I said, I needed to talk to you. I have some rather bad news. Yes? I'm afraid it's your sister. My sister? She's to be buried this evening at Whitechapel Cemetery. Your mother <coughs> finished the obituary this morning. I see. I'm sorry, Jonathan. Please accept my condolences. I'm gonna end the ear though. TT, peppy party!